Hi, my name is Angelica. I'm from Israel. And um, I've been living here for about uh, 16 years. And I've been going to Israel about every uh, one or two years. And I uh, noticed an increase, a ter uh, really an a very nice increase in the start of living of the, let's say, Palestinian, Israeli, Palestinian. But at the same time, um, I think also the, the Palestinian uh, uh, autonomy. It, it, I can, it really stand me that in my last two trips, uh, I encounter all the people I encounter were apparently Arabs. They gave me service when it comes to medical service, so the waitress, so everywhere. So they had a position all over. It, it happened that I just encountered only Arabs in my last trip as a tourist in Israel. And it, it, has, it has not been like that. When I was living there, there was more segregation and the business and through the, you know, definitely Arafat time. Things were really separated. And now uh, I also hear from my Israeli friends that um, definitely the Palestinian, Israeli Palestinian, they would never li would like, they would, they, they would detest to go to any country that are, is Arab. Then a lot of Arab, they, they have a lot of family in Jordan and uh, even in Syria, they would dream to live in Israel. With all the political issues, the standard of living is at least, may they say, three times better. The income, it can be that is between five to ten times higher, but you know, but the living in Israel is also higher. So let me suggest that when we talk about the Middle East, uh, one should never say definitely never. <laughs> that just is not going to help us understand things. Second, part of what you said is true and part of what you said is not true. And the part that is true needs to be dissected a little bit, too. So first of all, it's not true that the standard of living in the West Bank is going up. It's going down dramatically. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, there, there are a few places in Ramallah and around Jenin in the northern West Bank where largely due to uh, foreign aid, uh, people have been given jobs. But uh, on the whole, high levels of unemployment, uh, increasing levels of poverty, and decreasing uh, gross domestic product uh, growth, uh, but negative gross domestic, domestic product uh, gro per, uh, growth per year. I, I think she specifically mentioned Israeli yeah. Palestinians. So yeah. Israeli Palestinians, there are two things happening at once. On the one hand, those who manage to get an education uh, are uh, increasingly uh, moving into certain professional sectors. Medicine, pharmacy, law, not engineering, not high tech, because most of those jobs have some defense component, and uh, Palestinian Israelis aren't hired for those positions, with some exceptions. I have a friend who's running a nonprofit in uh, Nazareth who's trying to actually deal with that question. On the other hand, by all social indicators, health, education, longevity, the Palestinians are at the bottom of the social scale in Israel. So you have in Israel what has been happening uh, actually in most of the global south, but also in the United States. Increasing gap between the rich and the poor. Um, Israel is the second or third most unequal country among the Organization for Economic uh, OECD o o Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development countries, these are the most developed capitalist economies. So, on the one hand, um, if you are upper middle class or in the Israeli elite, and that does include a few Arabs, you're doing fine. The vast majority of Israelis are not doing fine. Israel has a very high level of poverty, and the poverty is concentrated on the one hand in the Palestinian Israeli sector, and in the other hand in the ultra-Orthodox sector. 